All right, well today what we have is a little bit out of the ordinary. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of primitive cooking. And the thing that we're gonna be cooking up is a gopher. Now that might seem fairly strange. I've been trapping these things all week. And really and truly, as far as survival goes, meat is meat. Um, and even if something happens, kind of an apocalyptic thing here in the United States or anywhere, the deer, the turkey, the pigs, the javelina, all of your big creatures are going to go into hiding or just about be hunted into extinction. So it's these little guys, your birds, your gophers, your raccoons, and your opossum that are really going to become the mainstays of meals. And those people that can find them, those people that can cook them and stomach them, they're going to be the survivors. I'm going to show you how to go about field dressing this. And uh, over here on the fire, we're going to do a little bit of survival cooking and show you how to go about preparing this guy. So make sure you're cleaning your hands. Simple, simple survival. Either in your bug out bag or on your person, you need to have a knife of some sort. And I always use the Leatherman Wave. It has all the parts and pieces on it. They come factory sharp. It's a good all-around knife. It's never let me down. And I'm going to do this without really taking off any limbs. I'm going to take off the head. You simply want to get the guts out. You want to get the skin off. You want to get the fur off. I'm going to start this out by taking off the head. Now you can feel around. If it's been quite a while since you trapped a sucker, do make sure that you're cooking it all the way through. I'm going to simply go through. <clears throat> And since it's a small creature, it's pretty easy to go about severing the head. So, there you go. Now, all's not lost. If you are really needing the calories, there is some stuff here in the neck. There's a bit in the brain. But unless you're just really, really hard up, I'll go about using that for really to, to bait another trap. You can always catch more meat with a little bit. And so you don't want to lose this stuff. Uh, once I've gotten this gone through, I'm going to go ahead and hold that gopher like this. And it may not seem like a very fun thing, but you're going to go through the body cavity, splitting up through the guts, and cutting all the way to where you've severed the head. And what this is going to do is open up the body cavity where you can clean it all out. It's going to give you an area where you can go about grabbing onto the skin and getting it all out there. Now, a lot of this stuff inside here is edible or especially good for baiting traps or using in fishing. So, there you go. There's just a liver, and that's got a lot of good stuff in it. You can either cook it up or put it on a hook. Uh, you have the stomach right here. Unless you're really starving, I'd kind of leave that alone. Your intestines, large and small. You see the little pellets from the little guy? He is a rodent. Your bladder back in there. You want to remove all those. Those are not things you really want to go about eating. If you've got a little bit of, uh, little bit of water in the area, free-flowing water, you're going to go ahead and wash these guys out. But it's understandable if you don't. Missed a little bit right there. We cut up through the sternum. Should have the heart back up in here. Yep, there's your heart up in the chest and that's full of goodies right there you want to eat that just kind of clean out all those digestive parts and portions and get it all cleaned out okay so that's what you're looking for and his ribs are so small that the knife just kind of cuts right through them get those out of there whatever the heck those are it's like clots of blood <clears throat> all right from here i want to go about finding some place where I can get a hold of the skin and pull it back. And usually right up here on the neck is where you can start with that stuff. Since he's a small creature, you can do most of this stuff with just your hands, no knife needed. Now you need to be very careful that you're not ripping the meat apart when you're doing this. You are very large compared to this creature. And it's very easy for you to rip limbs off at times. There you go, leave the claw on there. Take your hands back here and again just peel that skin back. <clears throat> you can feel the meat ripping if you're doing so. Get yourself a different vantage point. 
try and get it where you're not ripping the meat off the bone because it's a lot harder to cook that meat up when it's in parts and pieces. You want to try and keep this thing as complete as possible. There's your second claw. Go ahead and go down the back. All the way. One claw. Coming up on the tail. I'm going to try and get the other claw first. There it is. And there you go. That is that. Now, again, if you got some running water, clean this guy up. He is a rodent. Want to cook him all the way through. But that is your gopher field dressed right there. Doesn't look too bad for a big underground rat. But let's go ahead and do this. So, plating this guy up, I have a fondness for using young, uh, young sprigs, young trees. And I've already used this thing once before today, cooking up a dove. Check that video out. Uh, but I'm going to use the same thing, and I like the double fork. I've already got it sharpened up, mostly. You want to make sure. If you're using these things multiple times, a lot of, a lot of uh, instances I've had where I need to go ahead and, and sharpen it down further because there at the very end, you might have charred it, you might have made it very brittle, and once they're brittle, there's a good chance that you can lose your meat and it can fall into the fire or, you know, none of it's a really good thing to have happen. So I'm going to go ahead and pierce this body all the way up and through, making sure that I'm keeping it open, the cavity open, so I can cook the meat fairly fast. I'm going to try and smoke it more than anything else and uh, make sure that it does not come off of this stick in any way. So the more connection points you have, the better. I'm going to go up through the sides. So the first bit of meat is up through the thighs. And I'm going to parallel that body cavity. I'm not going to go through the ribs or anything. The meat's so, so thin there that it's really easy for it just to kind of uh, char off of the, off of the, uh, the wood. I'm going to go through a second one. These are going to be the shoulders. And so I've kept the body cavity open and I've got the various arms and legs spread out there. And in doing so, I should be able to cook this thing up at a, a pretty constant rate. I'm going to use the flame to kind of get the claws singed, if there's any hair on there, to burn it off. And I'm going to cook this very, very slowly. Uh, I know that in a survival situation, you're probably going to be very, very hungry but uh, you'll get more out of your meat. You want to you wanna cook it slowly. You're not going to get the nutrients out of having it charred. Uh, and the more you cook it, the less you're eating raw, the more your digestive system is going to be able to uh, take this easily. Because uh, when you're surviving, you want to be as nice as you can to your, uh, to your digestive system. You want to get the calories, but you don't want to get sick in doing so. If you have the patience, and usually when you're out here doing this, you have other things you can be doing. Uh, gathering firewood, making shelter, there's a million things you have to do with your time when you're out here. Uh, sometimes people will sit here and, and watch it very carefully. I myself like to use rocks and kind of sit it up here where it can uh, cook slowly and uh, just kind of check it every once in a while, flip it over here every once in a while. And I don't have to uh, be here and waste my time. So just like that, up above the flames, where I'm not gonna not gonna blacken it, but enough where that smoke is getting there, the heat's getting there, and it's gonna start drying out and cooking that meat. So we'll give this a few minutes, flip it over. It shouldn't take more than 15, 20 minutes to cook the whole thing, and then uh, go ahead and try my first gopher and see how it goes all right so it's been about 15 minutes it looks like he's been cooked all the way through but I'm not too experienced when it comes to gopher cooking and pull him off and give it a look as always uh, whether it's wild game 
or stuff you've gotten out of the supermarket, you're going to want to cook it all the way through. Make sure that you don't have any worms in there, any sickness. If you saw the animal before you killed it, uh, check and see if he's acting right and looks like he's sickly. But got a lot of meat in those shoulders, which is what you'd expect from a gopher. So all I do is uh, burrow. Go ahead and pull it apart. Pull it apart pretty easy. Looks like it's just about done. So, bon appetit. That's good meat. It really is very tender. A lot of times the smallest animals just have the most tender meat. So, this one tastes really good. And I'm probably going to get probably about a quarter pound worth of meat off of it when I'm done. Uh, sometimes with these small animals, the bone structure will be so small that you can actually crunch into it and get some of the marrow and really be able to digest the bones too. So, presumably, you won't have to get the meat in between the ribs. You can go ahead and just eat the entire rib cage. It might be a little more crunchy, but uh, use your imagination and uh, lace potato chips, right? That'll do, little thighs. But how to cook gopher, how to eat it. And uh, folks, it ain't bad. I'm not encouraging you to go out there and uh, trap gophers and eat them on a regular basis, but uh, as an option, I'd take this any day.